Hey everyone, get settled in. We'll start the show here in a bit. I just want to give everyone a second to get logged in here um, so we can start. All right. Hi, everyone. Good morning. Good afternoon, wherever you're joining us from today. Welcome to today's webinar co-hosted by the New York Oracle User Group and Oracle Partner Viscosity North America. Today's webinar is from our Oracle Level Up series featuring product managers um, from the Oracle Enterprise and Cloud Observability and Management team. This is a live webinar, so feel free to submit questions in the Q&A field, and our speaker, Desiree Obroqua, will get to you as she can, but she also brought a bunch of additional Oracle experts for us today um, that are here to help out and answer more questions on the back end, so please take advantage of this hour you have with them. Um, they're a great team. We'll introduce you to Steve Lemmy here in a bit, who's been working with us um, and partnering with us to bring speakers for this series. So thank you all again. Um, I'll go over some house rules again um, in a bit. But first, I'm going to turn it over to Coleman from the New York Oracle User Group to tell us a little bit about their org. Thank you very much, Monica. So the uh, New York Oracle Users Group was formed in 1984 for the exchange of ideas, assistance, and support among users of the Oracle software products. Next slide, please. You can connect with us on, we have to change that, X, formerly Twitter, Meetup, LinkedIn, Facebook, and our website, nyoug.org. And we're also uh, open for anybody that wants to present the session to uh, co-host with Viscosity. We're always welcome and open to do that. Next slide, please. And we want to thank Viscosity for hosting these series of webinar, co-hosting series of webinars for the past three plus years going strong. Thank you very much, Monica. And thank you, Viscosity. Thanks, Coleman. I mean, if you guys aren't familiar with us, we are an Oracle partner um, and we cover these three tiers. If you hear a squeaky toy in the background, I apologize. I am a new dog sitter. <laughs> um, but Viscosity follows these three pillars. Uh, we are founded by former Oracle uh, employees. And um, if you see anything upon this slide that speaks to you or speaks to any pain points that you may be experiencing at work, let us know. I'd be happy to help out or even just uh, refer you to others or some resources. We have so many free resources with Viscosity, especially with how many um, published uh, consultants we have and how many webinars we host. I, I'll be happy to direct you to something that might help. Um, and some of those authors and presenters I was talking about, you can see here, and they're part of the Oracle ACE program. Um, if you're not familiar with that, I highly recommend looking into it. Um, Charles Kim right here is our founder and CEO. Uh, him and Rich are actually going to be in an upcoming panel with us in NYOUG in January, so stay tuned. On this screen, I normally just like to point out that we also help with license management. I know that can be normally a tricky part for an organization, especially, you know, you're making a large investment. We want to make sure you're paying for the right stuff. Um, and we want to make sure we follow up and that you're using it to the best of your ability. So it's always great to have a partner like Viscosity um, to help you out with that. All right. Over here, I've just got a couple of the books we've got out. Our most recent ones from 2023 are Oracle Database Performance Tuning, Upgrading Oracle Databases, and Oracle on Docker. And if you can hear a puppy in the background getting into a box, <laughs> I apologize. But um, AuraPub.com is also something I want to point out. We host all of our recorded webinars here, and you can actually sign up to be a free member and um, access all of those recordings. So even like today's session, you know, if our speaker allows, we post it there. We also post it with a slide deck for you to access um, and it takes us just about a day to get everything up there. So if you haven't gone to www.orapub.com, highly recommend it. 
We do do in, uh, sorry, live training, normally like three day courses um, that you can pay for there. There are different tiers of membership, but again, free memberships give you access to tons, tons and tons of resources, whether they're print or video. All right, and with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Steve, um, who's gonna introduce our speaker in our session for the day. Well, thank you very much, Monica and NYOUG members. This is Steve Lemmy with the Enterprise Manager and Observability Management team here at Oracle. And we know that some of you were not able to make it out to Cloud World 2023 and may have not even had an opportunity to attend the virtual technical forum. So we've been working with NYOUG to cherry pick and bring you some of the top product managers and their content. And without exception, we have Desiree today. As we know, a lot of changes continue to go on, and especially with the Enterprise Manager 13.5 release train, yet another release coming out, uh, update last week. Uh, lots of exciting and new enhancements happening. So over to you, Desiree. And she may even share at the end uh, a secret link to a lab where you can try out what she's talking about today. Okay, thanks for the introduction, Steve. Give me one second to share my screen. And while she's speaking, feel free to use the Q&A panel. We've got several of us behind the scenes helping with your questions today. Yes, can you see my screen? Yes, we can. Okay, perfect. So um, as Steve said, my name is Desiree Brokwa and I'm a product manager in the enterprise and cloud manageability team at Oracle. And today I'm gonna to be covering new enhancements in Oracle database monitoring. I'm also joined by Steve, of course, and then Anna McCollum and our development team, Josefa and Jay. And they're also gonna be helping with any Q&A questions that you guys have. Many of our customers use Enterprise Manager for monitoring their database estate. And over time, environments change, new requirements may come um, from their own stakeholders, and hence they look to Enterprise Manager to, to, to continue to meet these new monitoring requirements. In this session, I'll cover the most recent set of enhancements in the database monitoring area. And I'll also highlight some common monitoring asks from customers and our solutions for these. I'll start with monitoring using database service names, enabling OMS to database connectivity across networks, and enhancements to PDB monitoring. And then I'll get into a change to listener error monitoring, better diagnosability for database guided discovery, new features to enable you to meet new database password policy requirements, and I'll end with a review of solutions for monitoring your primary and standby databases. A database service is an alias used to connect to the database. Database services are used, for example, in um, scenarios where you want applications to connect to a preferred subset of rack nodes. You can create services for your rack databases single instance databases, and pluggable databases, or PDBs. When Enterprise Manager connects to the database, it uses by default the database SID to connect to the database for discovery, monitoring, and admin operations like creating tables. Here we see two types of connections to the database. The connection from the OMS to the database is used to support access to database performance pages and for admin operations and the connection from the agent to the database is used for metric collections. Now with the feature called preferred connect strings, EM can connect and monitor databases using your service names. A preferred connect string is a fully qualified connect string that can override Enterprise Manager's default connection configuration to the database with your preferred connection method. You can create a preferred connect string using the host port and service name and specify that to be used for database connections. To use your connect string for OMS to database connections, specify it as an OMS preferred connect string. And to use your connect string for agent to database connections, specify it as an agent preferred connect string. To use preferred connect strings, you have to make sure that EM and the agent monitoring the database are at least on EM 13.5 RU15. 
As mentioned, you can specify preferred connect strings for single instance databases, rack databases, and PDBs. For rack, you should specify the connect string for each rack instance, where the host parameter of the connect string is a virtual IP of the rack node. There, there are two ways to set up preferred connect strings. One is by using EMCLI verbs, add target, or modify target. And the second is by using the UI. So you can either use the discovery UI or the monitoring configuration UI. When using EMCLI, use the properties parameter with the property name of preferred connect string for the OMS preferred connect string or property name of agent preferred connect string. The, ne the connect string value for that property is a fully qualified connect string I mentioned earlier. Now, to specify the connect strings in the UI, you first need to set an OMS property, oracle.sysman.db.showAPCS, to the value of true and bounce the OMS. Once that's done, you'll be able to specify the connect strings in the UI. And here is an example of the target's monitoring configuration page where you enter both the OMS preferred connect string and the agent preferred connect string. As mentioned for rack databases, remember to specify these connect strings for each rack instance. And after all this, you have to log out and log back in to the EM console, which updates the OMS DB cache connection with the connection information you specified in the OMS preferred connect string. And as I discussed earlier, OMS to database connectivity is required to access database performance pages and to perform admin operations. In some customer environments, EM and the target databases may be located in different data centers with no direct connect connectivity between them. So to support OMS to database connectivity, you can use the OMS preferred connect string and include a proxy server. Internally, this connection uses JDBC, and JDBC supports use of a proxy server for connectivity. We show an example of what the OMS preferred connect string might look like and note the inclusion of the proxy server and the proxy port. And also note, you also need to apply the specified patch to support this configuration. When monitoring PDBs that are part of the rack, currently we require that all PDBs should be open across all rack instances. And this is because in a rack environment, the agent that is currently designated as the master agent will connect to its associated rack instance. And if the PDB is not open on that rack instance that currently has a master agent, that would impact the monitoring of the PDB. But customers have indicated that they have configurations where PDBs are not open across all instances. Instead, the PDB is running and open only on one rack instance or a subset of rack instance. And this configuration can now be supported with the use of services and preferred connect strings. So to use this, first, you have to create a service for your PDB. Then you can create a PDB preferred connect string that contains the scan listener host name and your service for the PDB. Then similar to what I've discussed earlier, in the monitoring configuration of the PDB, specify your PDB preferred connect string for both OMS preferred connect string and agent preferred connect string properties. Once all of this is specified, the agent would connect via the scan listener to the open PDB on the preferred rack instance whenever it performs metric collections. And at the end of the presentation, I'll send links in the chat to the EM documentation for more details on how to set this up. With the use of PDBs gaining more traction, we've added a rich set of metrics to help you monitor PDB research resource usage on um, a per instance basis. So these metrics include CPU utilization, buffer cache usage, IO per second, 
average number of running sessions and PGA and SGA usage and other metrics that enable you to more closely track PDB performance and resource consumption on a per instance basis. You can monitor these metrics from the all metrics page in the EMUI and also set thresholds to get alerts. And these metrics are also documented under the PDB research usage metrics and the Oracle database metric reference guide. Whether or not DBAs choose to open the PDB on all or a subset of instances of a rack, they may wanna get alerted if the PDB is not open on the desired sub um, set of rack instances. Or perhaps the PDB is open, but it's open in restricted mode and they may wanna get alerted for this as well. So with our new PDB mode metric group, it supports all these use cases. This metric tracks the mode of all PDBs across all rack instances. And the mode metric indicates the current mode of the PDB, which can be read write, read write restricted, read only, read only restricted, and mounted, which is the mode when the PDB is closed. So this table here shows the various alert conditions that you can monitor on PDBs running on each rack instance. If you wanna get an alert if the PDB is closed on a specific rack instance, set the threshold of the mode metric to mounted. If you wanna get an alert if the PDB has been open in any restricted mode, so read write restricted or read only restricted, then you would set the threshold for any restricted metric to yes. And if you want to get alert if the PDB is open in read-only restricted mode, set the threshold for read-only restricted metric to yes. And here on the right, you can see a screenshot of the PDB mode metric in the EMUI. And also you can see an example alert for when the PDB is open in restricted mode on a rack instance. You may also have scenarios where you need to monitor application metrics for a PDB. And the solution is to create a metric extension for the PDB using a PDB local user. So this is a PDB user that has access to the application tables in the PDB. When creating a metric extension, by default, it will use the monitoring credentials for the target. For PDB specifically, PDB targets are monitored using the CDB common user, for example, DBSNMP. For metric extensions, if you wanna use credentials other than the default monitoring credentials, you will have to create a new monitoring, monitoring credential set for the target of the metric extension. For this PDB use case specifically, you will have to first create a custom monitoring credential set for the PDB target type. Set the PDB local user as a value for that credential set, and then you can use it in the metric extension. But I'm going to walk through this more in detail in the next slide. So to support this use case, we first enhance our credential sets to support creation of a monitoring credential set specific to the PDB target type only. You use the EMTLI create credential set command and specify the target type of Oracle PDB and also add the monitoring flag. Once created, you can go to the monitoring credentials section of the console, choose your PDB and specify the PDB local user as credential values for your new credential set. After you've done this, when you create your metric extension for the PDB, you can choose the PDB credential set that you've just created. So that's it for the PDB enhancements. So let's now switch gears to listener error monitoring. Um, the listener's TNS error metric is used to monitor errors in the listener log. This metric has been updated as follows. If the listener is in blackout for a certain time period, when the blackout is stopped, any errors that have occurred during the blackout period will not generate alerts. Prior to this change, 
EM would have generated alerts that have occurred within the blackout period. This updated semantics eliminates alert noise from any expected errors generated when the listener target was under blackout. But if you would still like to get alerts on listener log errors during your maintenance periods, then you would use notification blackouts on the listener target instead of regular blackouts. Guided discovery can be used to discover the Oracle database system and its members, such as Oracle database, listener, ASM, and cluster. Starting with EM 13.5 RU16, in addition to errors, we now also show warnings encountered during the database guided discovery process. And this is useful because it brings visibility into potential targets that should have been discovered and enables the user to further troubleshoot their configuration. Being able to change database passwords across your fleet on a regular basis is critical and can potentially be a time-consuming task. So to support this, in past releases, Enterprise Manager has introduced two types of jobs to change the database password in EM and in the database. So the two jobs is change the password for the database monitoring user job that changes the password for the database user that is used as monitoring credentials, for example, DBS and MP. And then the other job type is change the password for a database user, which supports changing the password for any database user. So these jobs have an option to auto-generate a new password. And when chosen, the job will generate new values based on the general structure and format of the existing password. But suppose there's a change in um, your password policy. For example, there's a requirement to increase the characters from eight to 12 and add a special character. So to support this, we've enhanced our password rotation jobs to support this scenario. Specifically, we've added a reference password feature that you can see in the UI here. So what this reference password feature does is that it allows you to specify an example of a new password that meets the new password requirements. For example, the new password has to be 12 characters long and contain special characters. So you can think of the reference password as a template for generating new password values. So when the job executes, it would use the reference password as a basis for generating new password values. And I also have a blog that I wrote about how to use this in EM. So I'll also link this at the end of the presentation for more information. The change password job can be used in these two ways. You can use it as a job that you can submit against your group of databases. And this leverages the job system scheduling features to schedule it at the appropriate time. Or you can use the job as a corrective action on an alert when the password is about to expire. The metric you can use to detect this is the monitoring user expiry metric which alerts when the account will expire in a specified number of hours. But alternatively, you can create your own metric extension to detect when the password needs to be changed based on your own rotation pass um, policies. And you can refer to um, AT&T's blog and video on how they set this up for themselves. Of course, I'll link this again at the end of the presentation. So now let's talk about monitoring primary and standby databases in EM. Let's start with monitoring credentials. If your standby database is in read-only mode, you can use your regular monitoring credentials, such as DBS and MP, to monitor the standby database. Otherwise, you will need to grant the monitoring user, such as DBS and MP, either the sysdba role or sysdg privilege. Granting sysdg privilege instead of sysdba better aligns with the principle of least privilege. The choice of using sysdg versus sysdba also depends on how the monitoring user is used. 
So if the monitoring user is used to monitor a database that has only the standard out-of-box metrics and metrics extensions that query fixed views or standa, standard data dictionary views, then you would grant the SysDG, which is recommended, or the SysDBA role. But if the monitoring user is used to monitor a database that has metric extensions that query application data, then you would grant the SysDBA role. You might have different monitoring um, and operation requirements on primary and standard and standby databases. So to address these different requirements, our recommendation is twofold. First, you create a dynamic group for your primary databases and a different dynamic group for your standby database. I'll discuss soon how you can ensure the group membership of these two groups will be maintained across um, database role changes. But second, you would use these groups in your operations against the primary and standby databases. So these operations will apply to the current members of the group. And now let's take a look at different use cases and see how these recommendations can be implemented. To create different groups for your primary and standby databases, Oracle recommends creating these as dynamic groups and use the high availability role target property as membership criteria. The high availability role target property is set to primary or standby based on the database's current role. When the database role changes via switchover or failover, the target property is automatically updated. So let's give an example of how you can use this. Let's say you have a primary group labeled primary group that contains your primary databases and its membership criteria is high availability role equals primary. Similarly, you have a standby group, standby group for your standby databases where it's high, where its membership criteria is high availability role equals standby. So assume database one is the primary database and database two is the standby database. So let's see what happens when their database role changes and suppose there's a switchover. So database one now becomes the standby and database two now becomes the primary. EM automatically detects this role change and updates their high availability role properties appropriately. This in turn will make database two automatically become a member of the primary group and database one um, will automatically become a member of the standby group. So there's a couple of steps to enable the use of this new target property and the MOS note reference below has instructions on how to do so. Um, and there's another way to create dynamic groups using this target property. And I'm gonna discuss this next in the context of the monitoring use case. When applying monitoring settings, you typically have a set of metrics and thresholds for the primary database that are different from your standby database. To support this use case, you can use your previously created dynamic groups and apply the appropriate monitoring template. Alternatively, to streamline this process even further, we recommend creating another type of dynamic group called administration groups. Administration groups are similar to dynamic groups in that their membership is based on target property criteria. However, they have the extra semantics of automatically applying monitoring templates to a target as soon as it's added to the group. For your primary and standby databases, you can create an administration group hierarchy based on the high availability role target property, where the primary group administration um, group has members whose high availability role is primary, and the standby group has members whose high availability role is standby. Next, you would create separate monitoring templates for your primary and standby databases, 
and then add them to a template collection and associate them with their respective primary group and standby group. Primary and standby databases should automatically join the appropriate group. And when they do so, the associated monitoring template is applied to them. And if a database role change happens, then the databases go into the appropriate group and the associated monitoring template would be applied. And as mentioned, administration groups are dynamic groups and can be used in all EM features that operate on groups. Another monitoring requirement is related to sending of notifications for incidents. DBAs may want, to, want incidents on primary databases to have tickets open for them and incidents on standby databases send emails to the appropriate teams. And to meet these different notification requirements, you would create two separate incident rule sets. For the first incident rule set, specify the primary group as the target for the rule set and then specify the appropriate actions such as create an incident for an event and open a ticket for the incident. For the second incident rule set, associate it with the standby group and specify the appropriate actions such as create an incident for the event and then send email to the DBA team. And then this is the third use case. Um, DBAs may have different requirements for running jobs. As an example, a DBA may have a policy to back up the database if it's a standby database. And to meet this use case, you can create the job against the appropriate group. For example, create the backup job against the standby group. And the backup will happen on all standby databases who are members of the group. When changing monitoring credentials password for primary and standby databases, you can use the job change the password for the database monitoring user. To use the job, submit it against the primary group. You do not need to include the standby group. The job would automatically take care of updating the password in the standby databases. You can use any of the options for the new password. So you can either specify the new value have it auto-generated by EM, or have it auto-generated using a reference password, like I mentioned, um, as a format for the new password. The job changes the password in the primary and state standby database, as well as in EM. To update the password on the standby, the job relies on the database's feature of auto-propagating the password from primary to standby. And this feature is supported for databases of version 12.2 and higher, but it's not supported for FarSync and Snapshot standby databases. But let's take a deeper look into changing the password for monitoring users on standby databases. Here you can see a diagram of a data, gate, data guard managed environment. The process of changing the password for primary and standby databases begins with a blackout on these databases so that agents temporarily stop monitoring them. After the databases are in blackout, EM updates the user's password in the primary database. After the password is successfully updated in the primary, then the agent monitoring credentials for the databases and any name credentials for that user are also updated. And happening in parallel, the password in the standby is updated using the databases feature to propagate password from primary to standby. Finally, the blackout on both the primary and standby databases is stopped to resume normal monitoring of the databases. Many customers rely on Enterprise Manager for monitoring their fleet of databases and as new requirements come in, Oracle continues to invest and enhance our features to meet these new requirements. In today's session, I've discussed our recent enhancements and the highlighted solutions to address many of the common asks from DBAs. I hope this session helps you better leverage EM for monitoring your Oracle database estate. And thanks everyone for listening.
Thank you so much, Desiree. For folks, uh, there are a number of links uh, that we're putting here at the end of the session. Um, Desiree, you want to mention your live lab by chance? Yes. So, okay. So I'll also um, add a link in the chat as well for live labs. So basically what live lab is, it's a way for you to test out, um, test out features and enterprise manager. We have a full enterprise manager fundamentals where you can test out labs for different areas. And one of those areas is enterprise monitoring. So basically it gives you an EM image and you can test out features like event compression policies, dynamic runbooks. And it's a way to just see what's in EM for free without having to update your own EM image to the latest RU. So I can send a link to that in the chat if you guys want to test out general monitoring features or just even see general features in EM. Or do you have a link available now, Steve? Great question, because I was just getting ready to post the one for enterprise manager fundamentals. And for folks who have not been okay, using perfect. Live Labs yet, the enterprise manager team has been doing a stupendous job putting out hands-on lab workshops that you sitting from your seats can actually get hands-on with these latest capabilities. And it literally takes a matter of minutes to do it. There's no cost to doing this. In fact, we even do workshops at Cloud World using this same system. So if you're not familiar with the Live Lab system or your team members, please take advantage of this free resource um, because these things that our speakers are talking about are available to you to try out. And even better with the Enterprise Manager Fundamentals image, you can get a hold of yourself, Enterprise Manager 13.5, RU15, and you don't even have to stand it up in your own environment. In less than 20 minutes, a fully running Enterprise Manager environment to play with and learn all these features and capabilities. So a little plug there for Live Labs as well as the technical forum. Um, Desiree, I also put a link out there for. Okay, perfect. Thank you, Steve. And I'm just sending a link to the resources that I talked about during the presentation. So give me one second. Yep, and it looks like a, a new question has come in about monitoring the performance of ASM. What is the question? Um, can I pass this question to Josefa? You certainly may. Followed right. by yet another question related to not going into incident rules. And again, feel free to keep your questions coming. We've got uh, Desiree as well as myself and other folks from the Enterprise Manager team uh, here to aid you with those questions. So, uh, the, hi, this is Jose. For regarding the first one, ASM performance, uh, I, I need more information because we do have uh, performance related uh, uh, metrics on ASM too. Now, I'm not sure if the question is about whether Perf Hub, are you asking whether Perf Hub and related type of uh, uh, features are available on ASM? Understood, yeah. Sometimes a little bit more additional information will be helpful to respond to the question. So yeah. uh, for the person who did submit that, if you can expand upon that, then we should be able to, to further answer it. Up oh, there we go. Yeah, I'll answer to that. I'll, I'll, okay, there are further information. Thanks for that. I'll answer on the chat. Thank you. And I do see a hand that's raised out there. We're not necessarily taking live questions as much as you in the using the Q&A manager. So again, if you do have a question, the best way to get a response is to go ahead and type that please into the question and answer panel today. And as we're winding down here in our uh, period of time that we've got available uh, with the members here at NYOUG, uh, any final comments, Desiree, that you've got for folks on this subject matter or sources of information to learn more? Yes. So I just sent in the chat, I just sent a bunch of resources to learn more information. And I think Monica also said that she'll be sharing these slides and the video recording at the end online. So you guys will be able to access the slides as well for more information. 
Yeah, great point. We've seen that asked a couple of times. Uh, they will make any replay and the slides available uh, so folks can share that with other peers, um, as some folks probably weren't able to join live. And again, uh, with anyone having any remaining questions, um, please utilize those resources. Probably the best one uh, is the blog site. I shared that earlier. Um, the team is typically posting about two blogs a week on latest enhancements as well as support updates related to not only our enterprise manager product line, but also our observability and management product. So if you're not already on blogs.oracle.com slash observability, and I'll drop that right real quick here into the chat, um, you certainly want to be subscribed to that because that's where all of this great information is being published along with examples, as well as customer stories even. Also, well, I, um, sorry, Steve, just yep. one question. I see a question that says, what causes a modern user to work for like a day, then start buffering the next time, like not opening incident rules? Um, so I'm not sure if I fully understand this question. Are you having an issue with using the incident rules in EM? And if you are, can you... Maybe we can take this offline, but if you can reach out to me, let me put my email in the chat so I can get a better understanding of the issue. But my email is desiree.abroco at oracle.com. So I can follow up with you offline because I don't know if I fully understand the question. Well, great. I think we've pretty much wound down to most of the questions that folks have. So Desiree, thank you so much. And again, the team members that were behind the scenes uh, helping answer the questions. But I think it's time to hand it back to Monica and NYOUG to go ahead and close up the session. Yes, thank you guys so much. We always love having you guys um, speak to our group. So thank you again. Um, I tried to take down as many of these links you shared so that we can um, share them just in the follow-up emails as well. Um, and like they mentioned, we will get the slide deck um, and we'll email you guys when the slide deck and the recording are posted. They'll be at both at myoug.org and at orapub.com. Any last questions? Last call. <laughs> All right. And if not, Coleman, this is our, our last joint webinar of 2023. Thank you so much for such a wonderful partnership. Um, we do have um, the same team presenting for us in January. So I hope you guys tune back in. I think it's like the 16th or so, somewhere around there. Yes, I recall. Um Definitely have more content to share and looking forward to it with NYOUG members, Monica. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. If you think of questions after the fact, feel free to reach back out to NYOUG or myself if you can't remember um, any emails or links you were shared with here and we'll get you what we can as well um, and put you in touch with everybody. So thank you guys so much. Have a great mm -hmm. week. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Oracle. Thank you, Monica, Viscosity, and happy holidays to everybody. Thanks, Thank everyone. You. Thank you to happy holidays. The There's a lot of thanks in the chat for you guys. So great presentation today.